Right, good morning, I'm Nick Barbon. Uh, this week we're going to be um, applying topsoil and top dressing and seeding. Um, patio was recently built and all the chalk spoil has been left over and filled back in to give a gradient on the lawn again. Um, you can see the existing grass and what we've got to do is level and smooth out and uh, if you've seen the um, lawn preparation videos we've previously done, see how we've got to take out all the bigger stuff off the surface. We've got uh, about 70 square metres of this to do. There's eight tonnes of topsoil coming tomorrow. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to make up a top dressing for yourself as well. But uh, initially, clearing all the bits of grass off here we don't want, clearing off all the big stones, and then we're going to tread it ready for prep to put the soil on. And uh, once the grading's been done, I'll show you again, and then tomorrow I'll be able to show you the topsoil. Okay. Hi there, right, end of day one. Um, the main area at the back we've now graded. Um, on the uh, lawn job we did uh, about a month ago, there's other videos on the channel and the ground preparation and grading, if you watch that, that'll show you how everything's done. The only difference I did here is I've used a uh, soil rake rather than a landscaper's rake because there was so much compacted chalk at the surface, which you wouldn't normally get, um, the smaller head has made it a lot easier to actually get through and actually take all of the big stuff out. It's about 70 square metres and we've taken out about... 20 wheelbarrows just of stones. Haven't needed to go too deep into the soil surface because we're going to be putting about one to two inches of graded soil on the surface so we haven't had to go down too far. But I'll take you along and show what it's like. From the picture you saw this morning you can see there's most if not all of the larger stones taken out. Most of what's left on the surface now is just stones that are about half a centimetre. So as you can see, everything's ready and prepared to go and all we need to do now is actually bring around the 8 tonnes of soil. It doesn't look like it needs that much but surprisingly soil doesn't actually get anything in bulk, doesn't go very very far. Uh, the only real tough bits were these little bits. <coughs> right, good morning. Um, we've had our topsoil delivered now, it's day two. I've also picked up our lawn seed, small bag of lawn seed. Um, this is the same seed mix that the turf that I use, the medallion turf. Uh, they're about three pound a square metre. This one will cover, I think it's 560 square metres. Um, but we've got a lot of overseeding to do on this lawn as well as the areas that uh, I've shown you earlier in the video. Um, but this bag is about 135 pounds. If you were to do normal seed from a normal nursery, you're looking at about seven or eight pounds per half kilo for anything that's a good mix which makes this although in itself it's quite expensive compared to buying seed at a nursery is actually relatively cheap plus it's a better seed mix as well so today we're going to start actually getting the topsoil out onto the ground and um, once i've got the main area at the back sorted out i'll show you how that is before we get it raked and graded and leveled all right right we're heading towards lunch time on day two Part of what we've been doing while we've been clearing out all the stones from the main area that needs top dressing with topsoil and seeding is uh, on the lawn areas we've found quite a lot of flint bits of brick and concrete and other bits of stones that have been stuck in the lawn. So what we're doing there as well is actually tidying up and filling in the holes. So with your topsoil, just using a trowel, push it in with your fingers into the holes where you've taken the stones out. just to give it a little bit of compression because if you don't do this what will happen is that over time or especially with some rain they'll just sink by themselves so you want to make sure that it's reasonably well compacted when it goes in always put in more than you think you need if you just put just enough when you compact it down what you'll find is it'll actually dip now, as, now even that, that needs a little bit more put up at the top here, a little bit of compression on the surface and then just gently run your hand over the top and bits of rubbish or bits of moss you get, just take those out and just literally run your hand over the surface gently and that will roughen up the surface a little bit and now that's ready and prepared just to take seed and um, what you can do is you can sift over some soil over the top of that to help protect it from the birds they'll still have quite a good go but that's, uh, that's just a simple way of just catching those and filling those in and if we come over here we can have a look and see what we've done so far We've done a bag and a half to two bags of the topsoil. 
so far this is how it's come up uh, here so we've uh, carried on work on the left hand side here still got quite a lot but this will just be the base layer of topsoil that we'll be having to start with in a little while once I've finished uh, the last half of the second bulk bag to put down here what we're also going to do is if you look where the edge of the lawn is here you can see there's a little bit of a dip from the grass down we're actually going to smooth and level that out completely so just in front of where you can see the rake the soil is going to come out about four feet and we're going to try and smooth and level that off completely when that's done I'll show you again uh, and that's just to try and make as smooth and a gradual line as possible so that uh, the result that we get at the end is as best we can get um, and as we go around this side I reckon that we're probably going to use about five bolt bags on this side just because the depth here is in some places about half a foot uh, normally one bulk bag 50 mil deep will cover 12 square meters and this side is about 50 square meters and in some places we're doing a lot deeper than two inches so it's going to take quite a bit and I would imagine we're going to try and grade this slope quite a bit to try and smooth it off as best we can but as we go we'll see how it works you can also see up here as well there's some other holes that I'd made that I've actually filled in as well there's some very large stones that had come out so we now fill those in and they're ready to go what may end up happening is as we fill in the rest of the soil the line of soil will actually go all the way back up to these anyway so um, that might have been work they didn't need doing but we won't really know the other thing we're going to do here I put these laurels in about a month ago and um, the steps here hadn't actually been done at that point so now that they're in we've now got a new level along here so what I'm actually going to do is take these last three out and actually bring the level of the lawn right up to the edge of where these steps are so right up to the the bevel they've put underneath the capping stones and then that will make that a lot smoother make it a lot easier to actually cut the grass afterwards and where they've stored all the stones brickwork cement sand and now me with the soil um, we can get this all tidied up and finished off properly so we'll actually get a really really good finish as to how the grass will be okay that'll be hopefully later on today probably getting onto this bit will probably be tomorrow morning but uh, we'll have a look see how we get on later today right as you can see here the first load of soil that we brought in I've now leveled that and treaded it as well um, if you're just doing an inch or so uh, you can only you only need to tread it once then rake it and then tread it again to get everything smooth With some areas here because it's so deep unless you tread it each level at a time You'll get more sinking and more of the soil actually settling down. So if you do it in layers You'll get a better finish in the end. It'll be much smoother and you won't get so much dropping along its length Also at this stage now that I've actually started to level I can now see the main dips that I've got to fill in plus at the edge I can now see because of the contrast and colour between the grass and the new soil I can actually tell where I actually need to put more soil in to make a smoother line and grade it so up at the end there about three feet in there's a curve of grass that comes in for me to smooth that off properly what I need to do is put a couple more uh, wheelbarrows of soil in that area to actually go back over the grass and it'll actually make the transition into the main lawn a lot smoother and that'll show up a lot more a few feet further down for the next six seven feet I'll do the same thing there as well and I'll show you that again when I've got some more barrows in just to start smoothing this out, I need about another nine barrows. Um, we're going to need another ten or so down here. So we're looking, perhaps by the time we finish this, this area, about another 30 wheelbarrows, which is the equivalent of about one and a half bolt bags, just to finish this area off. Okay. Right, here we are, end of day two. We've now shifted uh, five tons of topsoil. Everything round to this side is done. I think we've got enough soil on the surface over here. I might need to add in another three or four wheelbarrows just to get the levels that I want. I've now gone along this, this side and got everything up to these coping stones. Uh, we've got three bags left. Um, I've got a whole feeling it's not actually going to be enough. Um, but we'll see if we can smooth the lines out and see what we can do. As long as we get the levels along the edge here so it's flush with the surface so that when the seed grows the lawnmower can actually run along the edge of the coping stone so it's actually got a good surface to run on. It means it can either run with either a roller or a lawnmower that's actually got four separate wheels. Uh, tomorrow we'll finish laying out the soil at the back here. We'll do a, a rake and grade and another tread and then that should be ready to see later in the week. And then we've got a space out the front where we've got a lot of stones to shift and uh, from when the build was done the uh, all the materials that were left out the front have killed off an area that's covered in sand and stones. 
So we're going to clear that out and smooth that off. Also tomorrow uh, we're going to be um, marking out the lines around the trees to actually make some nice small circular beds around the trees that were planted last December, plus the existing trees that are on the front border and also how to cut out the front border as well because that one when it was put in all the laurels were done but nothing was ever tidied up so I'll show you how that was done as well. Okay, see you tomorrow. Okay, right, we're at the end of uh, day four. It's been very, very hot again. It's seven o'clock now, so I'm quite glad I'm in the shade. Um, it's now time to do the seeding. Um, for most of this area at the front, there's only patches, so it's just gonna be shaken on by hand. If you've got large areas to do, uh, get a spreader. Um, if you're filling in whole areas, then you want to spread at 35 grams per square meter. If you're overseeding on existing lawn where there are patches, it's 23 grams a square meter. And if you look at the instructions on your lawn spreader, which can be used for doing lawn feed as well, it'll give you a, a grading as to what number you should set it on for that. Um, dry conditions for laying seed, dry hands as well. This is what the seed will look like. And literally for the areas we're gonna be doing, it's gonna be like spreading chicken feed. So, gonna be spreading. You don't want too much, so otherwise they'll try and grow on top of each other, actually slow down the process for actually allowing the grass seed to grow. If you're doing small areas, uh, the night before you're actually laying down the seed, get a pair of tights or something similar to that, put your grass seed inside, fill a sink with some warm water and submerge all the seed with the end tied up in the warm water for about an hour take it out and squeeze it off the excess water, hang it up in um, any warm room, even the shower room or something like that, overnight, and then the following day you can actually sow the seed, and the germination process with this dry, we'll start seeing shoots coming up within seven to 21 days. If you warm the seed the night before and actually put it through moist, then you're looking at four to 10 days for those to start, so it should speed up the process really, really quickly. With the amount of seed we're putting down, that's just too long. So I'm gonna get on, get this done now, and then I'm gonna run around and show you what it looks like when it's done. If you are using a spreader, um, but you're uncertain as to how much to overlap, because what tends to happen, you've got a spindle at the bottom that throws the seed out, you're not quite sure how far it's going. Halve the rate that the spreader says to use, so if it says number 35, bring it down to number 17, walk backwards and forwards one way and then go across the garden the other way and that way you're pretty much guaranteed to fill in all the gaps so you won't end up with weird stripes on the new areas that you've done. Also where you've got patches where you're butting up against existing grass with your grass seed don't just go to the edge of the soil and don't just try and do this. Actually overrun into the other grass so that you're putting seed on the soil that you've laid plus the seed goes into the existing grass as well because it's pretty much guaranteed that the grass seed you've got won't match what you've got in your lawn. This particular grass seed is a blend of seven different really strong varieties. Most grasses tend to have three, sometimes four different grass types so there's going to be a difference and if you just go to the edge of where your soil is it's going to look vastly different to your existing lawn so if you match it into the existing lawn as well it won't look quite so weird when it starts growing. So yeah, always overlap, and that way you'll get the best result. Okay, all the seeding's finished. I've now gone over the surface and gently raked over the surface to actually put some of the soil over the top of the seed. Um, one helps with the germination, but also um, stops a fair amount of the seeds going from the birds taking it. Um, now we need to water. Now, when you're watering, firstly, you need to do it when the sun's off it, so you need to be in shade like we are now. It's only a little bit, but there's a lot of heat going out of the sun, so it's okay. And when you water, you don't water at the soil, you water your hose up in the air so it falls like light rain. So a setting like that it takes quite a while to do, but it's the best way to get the moisture into the soil and actually give your new lawn the best start. Right, I'm going to finish up here. That's all from me for today. Um, with the germination taking one week to three weeks to get going, and then another three to four weeks for the grass to actually get to the length that we want before we do the first cut, which is two to three inches. Um, I hope that uh, once this video is done, I'll be able to 
come back in a month and a half, two months, and all this should look like lush green grass. And we'll get some photos and a bit of final video from here, and then we'll show you what the results are like. So see you in a couple of months.